riding on a daydream. Heidi was asking me as we walked around the park if this was from the 60s. And I said, I, it's still got all of its original axles and everything underneath. Man, this is really cool though. So this is a rental unit from what I can tell. It says number one on it. And it's just cool. Now they did put obviously a built roof on it. But look at this thing. It's got to be from the 50s. It, it just has to be. I, I, I Just the styling cues and everything on it. So this is some sort of rental unit. I'm going to turn you guys around here in a second and show you a couple more. But look at how cool that is. I think this one's the coolest out of all of them. But anyways, there's some over here too. You can see this one here. That says unit number two on it. That one's pretty, pretty much a, a box also. I don't know, I don't know what that one is either. Like a FEMA home? <laughs> That's way before FEMA was around. And then this one here looks like uh, somebody's renting it possibly. Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to 66 degrees. It wasn't like that the other day though. Look at the truck. Yeah, that was rough. Let's see what Heidi's doing over here. She's doing black tank. She's on black tank duty. Fun times. Fun times. Some of you guys uh, have inquired, and we don't normally talk about it, um, about our black tank routine basically we always make sure there's a lot of water in the black tank I fill the bowl like five times yeah yeah which is like, like 2.6 gallons each time so what she means is after this is all flushed and empty right now we're running a flush on it I'm gonna get to the other side here these guys are in the sun She'll run a flush that it goes to the other side of the RV and clean out the tank. And then afterwards, of course, we shut off the flush and we shut the tank in its closed position. And then we'll fill the toilet bowl about four or five times. We'll completely fill it and then flush it. And that will give us a lot of water in there to start with. And it seems to do good. It keeps uh, everything away. The smells don't build up. And uh, the tank stays clear. It stays pretty clean. So. Well, we don't know how clean it is in there. I don't know. <laughs> we, we can't see it. We always leave a little bit of water in there when we travel. Um, maybe a gallon. So uh, what I usually do is I fill, it up. I fill it partially up after I do all this. And then put it in the tank before we travel. Yeah. I mean, it's not much, but... And then that sloshing around. And then that's the first thing we do when we get to the new campground. But you have to remember to close the black tank. <laughs> yeah, right. So when we get to the new campground, wherever that may be, and we hook up for the first time, um, we want to run the water you know, supply that the park gives us. And we don't want to run it through our water filters and our water softener and our water system, our fresh water system, because we don't know what kind of water, I was looking for ants, <laughs> what kind of water, you know, the park has since it's a new park for us. So what we do is we make sure we hook up the, the sewer hose and we hook up our black tank flush and we pull the black tank and that gallon or two gallons that's in there that has been sloshing around during our trip. That comes out, obviously. And then we turn on the black tank flush, 
and we flush the park's water system through the black tank so we know that it's getting you know decent uh, amount of uh, water flow that has gone through all the way up to the spigot then we hook up our fresh water system and then you know we'll run that also a little bit just to flush out our filters our softener and our hose and then we hook up to the RV and then we're set that's pretty much we're set and then again we go in and fill up the tank uh, about five times yeah we're both tired today it's like we can't breathe today today's a a struggling day we got like 20 steps we have to go up and down yeah we'll talk about that in just a minute but we wanted to welcome you to the channel and uh, the next video on the series of us being out here um, I have a feeling that after this video or at the by the end of this video uh, we'll already be at our next location and uh, you'll get to see what that park looks like but we still have one day here and then we leave tomorrow and it's not too soon I really need to see some lower elevation even though it's 5,000 feet uh, it's still not 8,000 feet so we're looking forward to that So we're heading over to the laundry because we want to make sure that's all finished up before we take out of here. So what are we doing today? Well, this is going to be kind of a little bit of a shock on some level for some of you that's been following us for a little while. Not a, not a huge shock, but different. Mm -hmm. We had just done a video the other day and we were talking about our son and uh, his girlfriend and them uh, you know their apartment that they've been at for some time well I, I don't know if we necessarily influenced them or what but they oh yeah there's tons of beetles all these black dots are beetles must have been a light or something that I couldn't handle Ooh, it's kind of dark in here so Here's the, uh, here's the thing that's kind of shocking, I think, on some level. Um, we got talking with them, and we was telling them what we thought, you know, the area. And we just said, ah, it's just a little too far out. You know, there's, there's basically nothing. There's, you know, you've got to drive 50 miles to the closest Walmart. 50 miles, almost everywhere. I mean, for them, they have to drive 13 miles to the basically end of their entrance uh, to get to a family dollar and that's that, I mean that that that's hard on you know young people when they're trying to you know make their way in the world not having a lot of opportunities presented to them because of where they're at so the uh, out, out of the blue uh, our son said hey we're leaving. We're 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 not going to stay here anymore. And again, it was kind of shocking. So, since it's like Heidi had mentioned, approaching July fourth for us, you know, in just a couple days, their their monthly rent is due at the beginning of July, obviously. So that means they're going to pack everything up as fast as they can and uh you know get out of here <laughs> uh i think it's hilarious because we know it, 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 there's nothing wrong with it but it's just funny that i was talking about on the video the other day i said well you know they've been out here they like it they have a lease and they, they talked to the landlord and he said no problem and they, he's even given their deposit back um you know that he, they made friends out here they had friends but they were the first ones to admit that um, you know they kind of romanticized about living out in this area and some of this stuff just didn't work out so well for them so uh, yeah I 
Uh, we're, we're all for that. So basically, we're helping them move. And, you know, our son's got the, his van, and we're going to load that van up with all their stuff. Now, the good news is, other than a queen-size mattress, a bed frame that full, you know, comes apart, and a computer, we're talking about a laptop, um, a microwave, and a couple of other things. There's a whole bunch of small boxes, but all of it should fit in his van okay. And then they're going to take off uh, probably tomorrow or the next day. So, yeah, I, it's, I think it's a good thing. Moving forward, that's a good thing for them. And uh, he's going to head back to Ohio for the time being. Um, yeah, I, again, I, I agree with all that. I think it's a good idea. I want to show you guys this while we were talking. I guess this is their camp store, which is really cool. <laughs> they got a little Kleenex in there. They got some uh, cheer, uh, Clorox, uh, a toothbrush. I mean, they're so. Oh, hey, they got a nice hat, Heidi. Yeah, see that. I don't know about the. I'm not really for the real tree stuff. I don't care for that. I wish it was just maybe black. I mean, it's real tree. It's got some barbed wire, but yeah, that's it's nice. Uh, these nail pegs, um, I think, hey, we have these nail pegs in our store on Amazon, right? Uh, Those tent pegs, well, we're going to have to add them if we don't. And then they got a sewer hose. What's that? I said they come in handy. Oh, you got Bibles up here? Cool. You can buy pop here. You can. Yeah. I was thinking about buying a can of pop. Since the last almost 10 pounds, I probably should yeah, Heidi's lost. Heidi's almost about ten pounds. I'm. Uh, You're about ten pounds too. Yeah, I'm about ten pounds. Oh, actually, I am ten pounds. Yeah, yeah, I'm like twelve pounds. Yeah. I was like fifteen pounds there for a couple of days, but that don't really count. Yeah, well, when we're out and about because we're not eating out, we're having a hard time. And we're only eating once a day, like yesterday, and. Uh, then we had a snack late last night, which was, I mean, it wasn't a bad snack. Yeah. But at the same time, it was too late. Yeah, we shouldn't have had a snack. But. Well, these work okay, right? Yeah. All Better right. than if you have two loads. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step outside for the fresh air. Okay, yeah. It's really stuffy. Yeah. It's, it's not that it's hot or anything. It's just it's much nicer out here. And Heidi showed you this stuff already through our park walkthrough in the last video, but... That is a meat locker, and that's for animal processing uh, for hunters. Um, you can see the big hooks up there for the processing, whatever it is that they're processing, uh, elk or deer or whatever. I still, there's a lot of this area that I would love to go, just go, but there's a lot of fences up. I get it. I mean, if I, well, hell, there's cows out there, so now I see why the fences are there. <laughs> but... I would love to be able to just hop on a, a you know, four-wheeler or something and go up to the top of that hill. Now, with that said, there's no way that I'm going to buy a toy hauler and haul around an extra thousand pounds worth of off-road equipment for the rare occasion that I might be out here. Now, if you hang out at these spots, no, you know, I'm not judging. If you hang out at these spots and you have a tendency to camp, like you i mean you can hunt this stuff down um you know everybody's got their own thing i get it I, it's just for me i, I want to do it just for that occasion i mean there there's people that do that with golf carts too and you know a lot of these parks don't even allow golf carts um and if they do you got to have you know a permit or you know some places you got to have a license if you if the park's real small and you're trying to go to the store and stuff um that's why we kind of stick with our transportation to be uh, our alternate transportation to be something that's legal pretty much everywhere. Uh, for example, we can get out our electric bikes and we can ride them through the park. There's deficiencies there, though. I could get out on this highway and ride the electric bike, but by the time we got to where we we're going, the battery would be depleted. Uh, same with the scooters. I mean, I can hop on those and ride them through the park. Very rarely uh, are those things are going to be illegal or an issue, but they do lack. I mean, they, they do have deficiencies. Um, it, it's just your own personal preference how you want to camp. I mean, you have people that 
you know, they go out and they're, they're picturing, you know, a big campsite with lots of area around them. You know, their neighbor's not within shouting distance. They can play music and the neighbor can't hear it. They get out their big screen TV and they hang it on the side of their RV or they open their bay and their big screen TV sitting there. Um, they uh, have a whole bunch of camping paraphernalia to get out. They bring their, you know, their smokers and their cookers and everything else. And uh, maybe they get out bicycles and, uh, uh, you know, big lawn chairs. Maybe they have a hammock. Maybe they have a gazebo. And they set all that up at their campsite. And that's pretty much what they do. They just hang out there. I, I mean, I get that. Uh, don't, don't ever think that I don't get that because we kind of did that. We used to camp that way. But as far as when you're full timing on the road, um, it's a little bit different. I mean, you're you're you know you're you're just moving your house from place to place to place, and I you know some areas are nicer than others immediately around your campsite, and then other ones uh, you know are, are real tight. You know, you're you're parking on top of each other, but the amenities usually match that scenario so what I mean is usually when you get in the situation that it's just RV 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 and they're all together you know it's real close together um, once you get outside that park there's all kinds of stuff to do there's there's a reason everybody's crammed in together um, but whenever you start getting out like this and the amenities outside of this other than just you know the natural views and uh, the ability to go enjoy yourself with nature pretty much any direction that you look um, the, the park is a little bit more spread out here um, but still it's only 20 sites and, and you know we have neighbors that are close to us um, still though you got a lot that you can do outside the park but I, I still don't think it's our cup of tea I mean basically it's it's just lounging and, and looking at views which I know don't come out on this camera very well but I mean what I'm seeing with my eyes, which I have really good vision as long as I'm wearing glasses, uh, man, it, it's some incredible stuff that I'm seeing. I mean, it's, it's just incredible. Our last view of Villa Grove, Colorado, San Luis uh, Valley campground. It's a 4th of July weekend. And we're hitting the road to Parachute, Colorado. Michael's getting ready to hook up. We're ready to get out of here. Our son is already 300 miles away, heading towards Ohio. I'm not sure if we had mentioned that yet, so. But getting ready Oh, you think you're running free, aren't you? <laughs> Wonder how you got through. <laughs> well, she got through. Yeah. That's funny. So we're finally heading out of the park, heading to our next destination. At and the we, end of the street. Yeah, we know. Turn left. We got it. And we've got to go up over 11,000 feet of elevation. Uh, up around aspen colorado and up real close to vale colorado of course if you guys hear that in stuff the on the, the news uh, or i should say on tv 
you know, those are both ski resorts, so you can get an idea what kind of elevation we got to go through. Um, we have another choice. We could go a different direction, but uh, it'll work. Well, we've gone through some pretty scenic area again. Uh, we're at uh, 9,000 feet. We're still climbing. And there's a river and there's train tracks that come through here. It's yeah. it's pretty nice. I, I don't know what part of Colorado this is, to the truth. Um, but we're on 24, heading north. And it's, a, it's not a bad drive. They, the elevation um, change, for the most part, is pretty gradual. And there are lots of stops along the way. And we see people down there kayaking and pulled off the side of the road, bringing their kayaks down to the water. Yeah, you can see all the water down there. And, it, and we've been riding along, you know, like most places, the road travels along the, the, the river and the uh, tracks, they, they follow along the river too. So, yeah, it's kind of cool. I, I say very scenic, very twisty, turvy. You know, there's no way I'm going to set my cruise and just relax and <laughs> take a nice casual drive. And it's not, I have to say that the hills and everything here aren't as bad as what we encountered. Um, where was that? It was a little bit from going into Arizona, yeah. from Texas to Arizona, that, that, those hills got a little goofy in a couple places, but the very scenic, as you can tell, I mean, it's just postcard pictures through the whole place, look at all that water, it's now coming off of the mountain, so we thought we'd show you a little bit of it, again, no musical montage, um, and we're still climbing. Like I said, we've got to go over, it looks like we're getting, real, we're getting close to 11,000 feet uh, eventually. Um, it's not too forgiving in the corners here as far as if you go off that little tiny guardrail, I don't think it's going to help you go, and you're going to continue to go down, down. <laughs> but it's, it's not bad. It's, it's not bad at all. Lot, and you know what's the funny part? I never thought of this. Um, but through some of the steeper part of the mountains, they have real nice wide berms. They're almost looking like lanes. I, I didn't realize how many people bicycle through the mountains. I mean, they're, they're full on bicycling through the mountains and I don't, that's too much work. <laughs> they're in better shape than us. Yeah. You know, the downhill part, obviously <laughs> it's not a big deal, but I'm get a little tight right here. But yeah, the, the uphill, I mean, these guys are going up some pretty good grades uphill. Oh, well. Yeah, be, uh, nice little towns all along through here. So, looks like this is Twin Lakes area, or you can get to Twin Lakes this way, and Leadville is in front of us. Oh, there's little cabins to rent. That's, That's pretty cool. cool. Yeah, I'm, glad, I'm kind of glad we went this way. So this way is, um, again, 24 north, and we're going around Aspen because that road looked pretty, it, there's a lot of switchbacks on it, and they also, from October to May, the road's closed. It didn't sound like a road I necessarily wanted to travel, and I thought, you know what, let me look at Google. Google gave us a couple options. Neither one of them went through Aspen. Then we looked at Waze, which is pretty much Google also, and it too gave us uh, the one option and it was not through Aspen. So then I did the Garmin GPS and uh, again, it didn't choose through Aspen either. Even though it looked like a shortcut, I thought, well, if it's telling us all three you know, choices there are saying, something other than Aspen. I'm not going to say, forget that, I'm going through Aspen. And again, there were some switchbacks. I mean, I, I zoomed in on the roads, you know, satellite view wise, and boy, they had some really, uh, they had some really tight turns. They just went back and forth. So we're going up through and real close to Vail, Colorado. Um, 
I don't know what that's going to be like, but I know that's going to be at some of these higher peaks, that's for sure. I'm not so sure these railroad tracks are used. Mm, yeah. We've got an awful lot of uh, vegetation. Yeah, there is. In and between them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Ooh, look at this. It's opening up to it. Yeah. Big view. Should have cleaned our windshield before we left. Oh, my. The whole truck, the RV, oh, everything. Yeah. The dust. I'll tell you, I don't know how, honestly, Heidi brought it up. She said, she wants, she says, I wonder how many people through their lifetime, how much dust they inhale living out here. And it's pretty much, so far, Colorado, um, Arizona, New snow. Mexico. <laughs> yeah. That's the most we've seen so far. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's cool. Sorry. But anyways, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, all those places. Um, they're all That's dusty. dusty. Texas, of course. But just dusty. It's just so much dust. I don't get it. I, I don't... I couldn't handle that dust part of things. I was putting our steps away today, and there's like a corrosion of dirt. All right. <laughs> yep, that there is. Yeah, yeah, really nice views, though. There's some cattle out there. Oh, yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, the, this part of Colorado uh, that we're traveling, this is probably the, the greenest grass, grassiest yeah. area that we've seen um, through for the last, I don't know, what, five miles, yeah. six miles? Prior to that, there was a lot of brush, but... Mm, I guess... I, 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 again, I, I don't know about living with that dust all the time, but the nice thing is, is that the climate's relatively dry, so I get it, so you, you know, you're not so humid, but... They still get snow. Yeah, yeah, forget the snow. <laughs> Alright, we'll let you guys go, pick it up later. So we went through a nice little town, it was called, uh, Leadville. This jack wagon up here. I don't know, a couple jack wagons in Leadville. <laughs> I'll show you them. This guy has got to be kidding me. Wasted all that time back there to do this. Oh my god. Idiot. My bills. Burger fries. Okay, Carmen. Say a command. Save video. So the nice little incline that we've got going on here. We're we're at 10,211 feet. Looks like we're going up to, like I said, 11,000. It's not bad. I'm in seventh gear at 60 miles an hour. Uh, we're starting up a little bit more of a hill or an incline. It's not bad though. This isn't, none of this is bad. Pretty view though. Yeah, look yeah. at look at that golf course. <laughs> Looks like golf, golf course grass up there. Yeah. Oh, I can't imagine playing the golf course with all the wind. Oh, and by the way, Heidi had to put her jacket on because <laughs> it's 60 right now. Burr. It's chilly. Oh, I get to drop down to six gear. Well, uh, I guess I can only do 60 anyways. Yeah, it looks like we're going through a little bit of an incline now. More than what we just did. But you, I, I thought we'd turn the camera on and show you what this looked like, this part of the country. And 
and here's another bicyclist. I'm telling you, these guys are hardcore out here on these bikes. I'm saying nope. <laughs> Me too. I, I'd be, I would have to carry an extra 35 pounds worth of batteries. <laughs> Which would probably be about three batteries, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's just no way I could, uh, <laughs> we're not bike riders. I mean, we ride bikes, but we ride the e-bikes. We just like to enjoy the, the slight pedal action and, and being able to get to where we want to go. Well, we could have went zip lining back there. Oh, yeah. There's something else that don't sound like we're, I can see it now. How much you weigh? <laughs> hey, is this thing rated for him? <laughs> so we're, uh, man, look at just, look at all the pines. Just the way this thing snakes through here, it's awesome. Hey, if you guys can hear the engine, it's because I need a diesel. <laughs> oh, you're funny. <laughs> uh, well, we, we've got people, as Heidi shows you the view, oh, there's a nice little crack in there. We still have guys telling us that during the video, they hear the engine and the truck is working way too hard. Oh yeah. I've had it all the way up to about 3,500 RPMs today. And That's they so talk right. about how their diesel tows and how low RPM it is. Not really comprehending that a gas engine is different than a diesel. And they sound different. And they operate different. So, whenever they say, oh yeah, mine, I, you know, I'm only 2,200 RPMs, 2,800 RPMs max whenever I go through hills and stuff like that and yours sounds like it's going to explode well when yours is an idle yours sounds like yours going to explode you hear all kinds of clatter and a rattle and everything and there's some stink coming out of it yeah i, I don't get it i don't I mean, get you're not it. getting 20 miles a gallon either. yeah we talked to a lot like of lion. people there ain't no <laughs> way all right we're going to close this off as we trek up the hill here and uh get to our 11,000 feet how about that we got into an area that's got some tights and twisties. Yeah. And if you look at it on the map, and Chuck holes. Oh gosh, yeah. Chuck, I missed it. <laughs> yeah, you did. Um, yeah, you can see it's, it's it goes along the river there. And again, railroad tracks. It's just tight, just a little tight and twisty. But it's really nice. It's cool to see. I, Of course, I can't enjoy the view as much now. You can see it whenever he's doing uploading his videos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I'm editing this video, I get to go, oh, that looked really nice. <laughs> so we went from 75 miles an hour down to, well, 60. I get, I'm, I'm in between because I'm not as heavy as they say. I can do 60, but all the trucks are doing 50. So. And our elevation is 6,100. Yeah. And it got, it's funny because it got real like, well, to us it felt humid because yeah. we haven't felt that in so long. Uh, last time we felt humidity was, you know, when we left Florida and got over to Texas. Um, Texas wasn't very humid. Uh, South Padre Island, I don't remember it being it was humid because it was the beach. Yeah, it was I mean, different. It was just different there, yeah. But, yeah, it actually felt a little bit humid uh, when we were going uh, past Bale. When we passed Bale. Yeah, I, did, I told her, I said, does your face feel really warm? And, and she goes, yeah. I said, yeah, so it's mine. So we've if you got... like boating, oh, yeah. fishing, biking, trails, this is the state for you. Yeah, we're not in... That's, again... You know, looking at all these places that we're going through, thinking, is this some place we might want to live? Well, there's a lot of things that you, you know, you move to an area for more than just the surroundings. However, there's so much derived, you know, as far as activities from the mountains, oh. um, you know, and of course the water, uh, that you, you'd really have to do that. Now, we love the water, we love fishing. I, I mean, that could attract us to the area, but 
I, this is a bridge? I, I, I do it. What's that? I said, do you know this is a bridge? Yeah, it's a bridge. No, I'm holding on to love the door. bridges. <laughs> but the, um, the whole attraction of the state is definitely, you know, obviously the mountains. So, I don't know. I don't think I like to deal with the fact that you just need to go 40 miles and you got to deal with the mountains, you know, okay. and to get it. You can't. Yeah, everything's about the mountains, but very nice. Like I said, very it's nice beautiful. views. It, it's yeah, it's really beautiful. Oh, oh little tunnel! I can't fit. <laughs> That's but, a short one. Yeah, it's a little one. They said, "Ah, oh, yeah, we're not tunneling this one out. Screw it. Or we're not, we're not chiseling this part of the. Uh, we're Sorry not, about that. We're not chiseling this part of the mountain out. We're just going to put a tunnel in. So." As soon as the GPS learns that it's daylight again, <laughs> you can see on the GPS here, how do you put it close? You can kind of see the, we're just riding in the gully, I guess you can say. So we still got a little ways to go, but yeah, we wanted to show you guys this view. Yeah, it's driving it's through. really it's, pretty. Yeah, it's really, it's really nice looking. That's, but I, I mean, I'm picturing, okay, I got to drive to work and I got to drive this every day. Mm, when it snows. When it snows, yeah. That's something else, too. You know they had signs out? They had them turned. The last ones we've seen, they were turned. Yeah, Probably so that people wouldn't have to see them all summer. Well, I don't know. The, it said icy conditions may exist yeah. when we were up at 11,000 feet. And I'm like, uh-uh. <laughs> that's what those signs back there said, too. But they had them turned. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. Well, this is very pretty, though. Not yeah. thing we've ever seen before. Yeah, yeah, just beautiful drive. I, I again, though, as far as living out here, I mean, we passed again through Vale. This is another. Tunnel. And we could see these sh like ski chalets up on the, uh, you know, way up on the hill. And there's houses, you know, chalets and houses. And I was thinking, I don't want to live up there. Ooh, the oh, roads are all By the way, Colorado's got some good ones. Yeah. I mean, you got a 75 mile per hour road, and all of a sudden they put out a construction sign that say slow to 60 miles an hour, slow to 50 miles an hour, and then it says severe bumps in road. And I'm telling you, they're ramps. Yeah. They were they were where the bridges joined the road, and it was some serious there. So. They have signs right at each bump that says 40 miles an hour. I, I think you have to go slower than 40. It, the bumps are really bad. And we saw a fifth wheel that had a motorcycle that was on the back of it. And he was pulled over, re-securing everything. I think he went over at a pretty good clip and it might have bounced his bike. Well, a couple of the bridge transitions were terrible. Yeah. And yes. then they got their, all the metal sticking out. Yeah. But, you yeah, know, I... It's a challenge, I'm sure. It's a challenge to keep these roads oh, nice. For sure. Yeah, I. Can you imagine? Yeah, look at this. this. I hope you can. Hope it comes out good. Yeah, it's such a pretty view. Yeah, it's very, very nice. I don't think that I would, uh, again, want to travel this though, other than what we're doing here, just for the scenery. That's yeah. it. Just the scenery. A lot of RVers out here. Lots of RVers. That says Colorado camper van on top of that. <laughs> Got a solar panel up there. Got some off-road machine. Um, I guess, I mean, if you did that, if you did that kind of stuff. So, I've never seen so many bicyclists. Oh, so many back in uh, lead. Ville? Yeah, Leadville. And Vale, too. Yeah. But Leadville, I mean, just in general. There's a vehicle stopped on the shoulder ahead, so Heidi's going to mark the, the ways. And then we're going to get him over so this guy don't have a brush with our <laughs> RV going alongside of him. Yeah, but you guys, I have to say that if you ever decide that you want to you know, travel. Um, 
and you haven't seen this, come on through. There's parts of this that remind me of West Virginia. There, Heidi said the same thing. Um, it looked a lot like West Virginia, but obviously the mountains. Are, the mountains are bigger here, yeah. and I and I don't. Let me phrase that. I don't know how big the mountains are in West Virginia uh, as far as elevation. However, they don't have you know a, a river that's tunneling through them or that has tunneled through them, you know, over the millennia. So it, it's it's different. You you won't see this kind of height necessarily in West Virginia, um, you know, just coming up, standing next to a mountain somewhere. It's kind of cool. Uh, like I said, it's worth coming to see. Let's, let's just put it that way. Yeah. It's definitely worth coming to see. And all we can do is just show you this little bit. And, and even then, the, I'm, I've said it that the camera just don't capture it. You, you feel so small. <laughs> When you get up next to some of these mountains, it's just, you can't imagine even, I mean, I, I, everybody, I, I again, I know the camera don't come across the right way. I want you to picture right now that you had to stop on the side of the road and walk up to the top of that. <laughs> and that's not a walk, that's a climb. All right. That's just, that's crazy. Yeah, luck, I mean, whew. Yeah. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. I, I think that uh, people that are into this stuff, you know, this, you know, activities would love it. I would like to fish the river. Yeah. But I would like to be in an area that's, you know, more flat. I don't like being in the, the mountains other than just to see them. Um, yeah, definitely. Definitely like to fish the river. But I think this is probably the best scenery that we've seen yes. so far. Yes, for sure. Now, it's a different type of scenery than some of that other stuff, but it's the best. Jeez. It's just the, the but you're, you're, you're driving through the scenery here. Those other places, we've seen a lot of nice scenery, but we weren't driving through it. This one, you're driving through it. You're participating in the scenery, really. We made it. We're at the park, we're all set up. We'll show that to you a little bit later. But I want to uh, give you a brief overview of the park. First of all, this is an RPI park for us, um, among other things. No, Passport America. I'm sorry, Passport America. This is a Passport America park, right. The next one we're trying to get to is a, a RPI, I forgot. Again. $14.50 a night. Ooh, $14.50. And guess what? They got plenty of spaces. And it's July 4th weekend. I don't know. what. How many times do I have to say it? There's plenty of places out here, guys. <laughs> you just got to not be so picky. But let me tell you about the internet. Uh, our T-Mobile has 5G. It's... Um, about three bars on our phone which don't mean anything but it's about 60 megabytes per second down the uploads not that great it's like uh, 1.2 on the upload so that we couldn't really upload video using that um, our AT&T through EasyCom the links in the description it's unlimited check it out um, our AT&T through EasyCom that one is uh, 10 down and 4 up. So 10 megabytes download and 4 megabytes upload. So not bad. It's not unbelievable, but it, it's working. Um, we do not have the big antenna up outside. Um, the EasyCom Verizon that is also unlimited. Again, same thing. Links are in below. Um, just click the EasyCom link. And if you happen to call in and talk to them, just tell them that you spoke with or talked to or saw the video of me talking to you, uh, just say Mike. Mike from RV Daydream. That's how I got here. And uh, they'll walk you through everything. They'll get you what you need. But anyways, that one there is very similar but slightly lower. It's about 8 megabytes per second on the uh, down, and then it's 3.9 on the up. So we have internet here. Um, the campground also offers satellite or cable. I have it run it through the... I have it program the TV yet we just got here and uh, the water pressure is good uh, we haven't tested the water though 
We haven't tested. Now we have all our filters on here, and the only reason we did that was because we haven't run our filters for at least uh, five days. And I don't like having our softener and the filters sit with water in them. Um, I like to be able to flush them and keep them fresh, you know, on some level. So uh, we'll, we'll have to check the water. I, I don't know. It, it should be okay. The water pressure, though, it's good. It's about 40. Was that it? Yeah. Yeah, it's about 40 here. So not bad. Um, now, what do I have a problem with? Well, here's something else that I've been talking about, you know, multiple videos. Um, the Hughes Autoformer and the Hughes Power Watchdog. You guys have to get that if you're going to be traveling to parks that are unknown. And that's the way it is here. Now, somebody had just left this site and they said that no, you know, nobody, no reported problems. But when we first got here, um, I went ahead and hooked up to the electric. It's supposed to be in the 90s all week and it's, it's very warm outside. So we hooked up, turned on both air conditioners. And for some reason, uh, the 15,000 BTU air conditioner. The compressor kicked on, it was running, and then all of a sudden the compressor shut off. So the compressor came back on again. It ran for a short period of time, uh, like maybe five seconds, and then it shut off again. And then the fan, of course, kept blowing. Well, then I noticed that the bedroom, the 13,500 BTU air conditioner, in there, it did the same thing. It shut off the compressor. I started doing a little bit more experimenting and again I can do that with the power watchdog because it tells me you know the amperage and the volts and everything else uh, that it's putting out now what we're reading here is what the auto former is doing this is what the auto former is doing as far as putting out voltage so the voltage is coming in from the park the auto former is doing its magic and then it is providing uh, in this case, on line one, 120 volts, 21 amps. And on line two, 124 volts, 1.3 amps, because we don't have anything really turned on there. Without her running her pressure cooker and me just screwing around with these two air conditioners, I decided to take my autoformer and unplug it. See, I've got it set up. I'll turn you around. Even though this looks like a disaster, I have it all secured and I have it set up to where when we run on a generator I can unplug this relatively easy and run on the Honda generator when we're boondocking I've also got it set up that in case the autoformer screws up there's something wrong with it that I can bypass the autoformer that's the box on the bottom and I can run just the power watchdog uh, surge protector which protects against high and low voltage so we went ahead and turned on the air conditioners anyways just to see what would happen and they both kicked on and they both started powering and then the one line uh, went down to 106 then it went to 107 then it went to 106 and then the power watchdog did its job and it shut off everything because the voltage dropped below 104 and 104 is way too low even for the autoformer the autoformer will not do anything with that that's too much upgrade I guess you can say that's too much ramping up that's needed that you got to steal too many amps for that voltage to work sure the air conditioner will run at 104 volts but it is bad on that compressor it will burn it up the voltage is so low that the auto former is trying to make up for it and it's doing a really good job but it's dropping below what's uh, what is safe uh, for the rig so um, apparently and they're quick about it um, relatively quick it's three o'clock it is on a Friday it is fourth of July weekend um, and uh, Heidi called up or went up to the uh, campground because it, it cost us how much again forty dollars forty three dollars and fifty cents to stay three days right yeah we're just staying three days here and she had told them hey we're having a problem with our electricity and they said well somebody just left there um, but we'll get an electrician and then they called her back and said, hey, he, as soon as he can get here, it's 6 o'clock. And it's like, that's fine. You know, no problem. Uh, yeah, it, the pull out there is something to behold. <laughs> we'll show you the campground. We are in Parachute, Colorado. Um, type in on Google Hide what my elevation is. So it's 5,092. So we're almost, almost in the 4,000s. 
and I think I can feel the difference. Can you? I'm breathing pretty easy. Yeah, yeah, because, like, I walked up there and back, and, and it's hot out, and I wasn't huffing and puffing. Yeah. So I come I come back in here, and I wasn't huffing and puffing. I was just hot. The the park is kind of strange. Again, we'll show that to you in a little bit. Um, they I don't have know A if, and B spots. Yeah, they have A and B spots. It, you share a, a driveway, sort of. I don't know how to describe it, but... We'll show it to you. We'll show you what it looks like. We have like. one out right in front of us. What? A spot. It, right in front of the truck. Yeah. You can see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's part of that yeah, other. It's weird. It's very strange here. Yeah. So Heidi's cooking spaghetti. We're going to relax, uh, watch some TV. I'm going to see if the cable works just for fun. That way I don't have to dig into my unlimited internet any more than I have to, which doesn't make a difference. We watch, That's all we ever watch is just constant YouTube videos and Plex and Netflix and Prime but uh, if they got cable it'd be kind of fun to see what they have here see if they got some good premium channels. The sights at the park are definitely different than what you're used to. Um, there are two sites for every like driveway I guess you can say. So you have site A to, over there and then this is site B and you can kind of see how everything's staggered and they are limited in size to some extent um, as far as what will fit on here but this is a big site uh, we could put easily a big fifth wheel here uh, or a motor home and then of course your neighbors they're kind of sharing you know it's kind of hard to describe it but this is their area over here which is kind of funny because that's where all the utilities are now I know this looks really bad because well it is really bad they do have cable here limited but nonetheless they do have cable and the sewer hookup is relatively close now the thing that is kind of questionable here is the electricity uh, as far as um, the way that it's set up <laughs> I don't like the way that all that looks. I mean, there's a lot of exposed stuff here. And if you look, the water spigot points straight up. Now, the reason they do that is because of permanent, you know, a lot of permanent RVers here. So it's really odd uh, that they have the water pointing straight up because it's out of the ground. And the electricity, we did have a problem with it, but they fixed it immediately and it's worked flawlessly after that. So you don't have to worry about that, but I will say, still get yourself a, a protector, just in case. Now, some of these other uh, plug-in devices, that is for um, heating all of this stuff, because this campground is open year-round. Um, there's residents have been here for quite some time, um, so just be aware of that. And then, of course, the back. Now, if there was nobody parked... Um, where that pickup truck is or even if that pickup truck is parked there I could have drove straight through I just think that that would have been rude so I decided not to now off in the distance of course you can see the beautiful mountainscape um, off in the distance you can see kind of a sidewalk over there I don't know if you can tell where I'm pointing but there's a wide cart path that will take you all the way down to the convenience store um, it's about two miles, so you can ride your bikes to the convenience store, no problem whatsoever, or walk if you want. Uh, as far as, you know, parking lot, living, yeah, it's a little bit what you've got here. But, again, as you see the mountains off in the distance there, you can see the mountains through the trees there, and you can see the mountains off over there. Uh, there's also a river, the Colorado River, is down the ravine. Um... Uh, I don't really see a way to get there unless you go down this stone quarry road in your vehicle. You can get to it that way, but most likely you're going to have to go back out towards Parachute, the actual town of Parachute, Colorado, and cross the bridge. And at that point, you can go to a park that's on the other side. And there's restaurants and stuff down there too, so there's places to eat. Um, what we're trying to do is find water right now drinking water because our filters still haven't come in so we're gonna hop in the truck we're gonna drive through the park and show you uh, what it looks like overall that way we're not walking through or riding our bikes we don't want to get out the bikes to ride and as far as walking some for how small this park is it would take 
a little bit longer than what I would like the video to go, believe it or not. So this is going to be the main road that you come in on. Uh, this is Eldora, and that's the uh, actual, if you type in the address, 95 Eldora, that's, that's where it gets you here. And whenever you pull into the RV uh, campground here, uh, you're going to see this building off to the right that's up ahead. That is the building that you're going to just pull up in front of. There's no rhyme or reason. I thought that they would have some lines on the road or something. But that's where you're going to go to check in. This office off to the right. This is also the laundry room, which is currently wide open. And you can kind of see what the uh, washers and dryers look like in there. There's some picnic tables, obviously, for just hanging out, I'm sure. Uh, the office isn't very big. But you can kind of get a feeling for what this park offers is maybe not the kind of stuff that you would normally do. And what I mean is, I wouldn't hang out in this park. This is not my type of park. However, we've been in a lot tighter, closer places than this. And for the money, three nights through Passport America, um, four, four night, uh, three nights, it's $43. Yeah. So again, Passport America links down in the description. For $50, we just saved ourselves a ton. Uh, I have no idea what this old building is, but they got barbed wire all around it, and it's a it's a cool looking building. It's old. It's got look like a cedar, you know, shake style roof. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that much about it. Um, pretty safe. I mean, you can see these people just leave their bikes. There's nobody there. The skateboards there. I, I, there's a guy around here who's got bicycles, and hardly any of them are tied up. Um, this is a, uh, of course, a cul-de-sac, and you can see off in the distance all the trails and stuff that go up into the mountains there. Um, and again, the river is uh, down this ravine, uh, more in the direction we're getting ready to travel than anything else. But the only way you can get to that, as far as I know, is going on that Stone Quarry Road, the main road that you're going to come in on um, before you even get to the road that you're going to turn to Eldora, the Eldora to pull in here. That main road, I, I don't get it. I, I, I'm not sure. Now, I'm not going to go all the way down here. This is another cul-de-sac. And this is one of the things I don't agree with the park, is people that are permanent RVers that get the best spots. I think the permanent RVers should get some really good spots that have different amenities than everybody else. But I believe that the, the, the people that are just traveling, you know, from place to place, they should get the nice spots. I, I, that's just my own belief. And I, if I had a park, that's the way I'd run it. So all these people that are out on the outskirts and these cul-de-sacs and that with these better views, I, I wish that was available to the people that were just coming in and staying for a few nights so they could enjoy those views. This is the, 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 the little circle, this horseshoe that I want to bring to your attention. I have no idea what's going on here, but it's like a, a, a nuclear waste zone or something. It's like something happened and they're not using any of these sites even though they're outfitted. I, I these look like permanent home sites, though. The way that the parking is is derived, you know, it looks like that there would be a home here, and then these two side by side spots would be the parking for the car. Uh, that's what it looks like to me. So they got rid of the homes, and I don't know if it's because the homes maybe got so old that they just decide to move them all or get rid of them all. And maybe they're trying to get enough money to convert this area over to RVs also. Because you can't, it would be very difficult to park an RV on those spots unless you turned them sideways. That's the only thing I could guess. Um, now, there is a water runoff that's right here. And from the Google map, it looks like it's a trail. It's not a trail. Uh, that goes down to the river. It's not a trail, but the river is over this edge all the way down, you know, at the bottom. I don't know, maybe these people didn't want to live near power lines. Maybe that could be it too. I'm sure they're humming. But I, I, I find this to be a real waste. It's a shame. I mean, maybe they should do, they've got to do something with it. Yes, you've got some junky RVs here. Yes, you have permanent RVs here. And I'm talking permanent meaning that they are living here full-time through the winter and everything 
you got some skirting that's going on that's not so good you have some older units you got people that work here I mean all of this is part of this lifestyle that Heidi and I have been involved with we've gone into parks that look just like this they're, they're not scenic they're not ideal but you know what we don't we, that, that's we don't stay in our RV other than just to sleep watch TV eat and um, just kind of enjoy ourselves and even with that we can sit outside and we do enjoy ourselves uh, when it's cool and there's a breeze it's been in the 90s for pretty much all, every day uh, we had some rain move through a couple times it's, it's pretty good weather out here and of course we're at an elevation I can breathe which is nice but just to just be aware that when you're traveling you're gonna run into this stuff now Again, reiterating the thing that I, re I reiterated numerous times, even on this video earlier, we have a spot. There's plenty of spots. And if you want to go fishing down the Colorado River, if you want to go explore Rifle Colorado just up the street and all the restaurants they have to offer, um, if you want to hang out and check out Parachute, if you want to ride trails, if you have a side-by-side, -side, if you're a mountain biker, there's plenty to do here. And guess what? There's a site available with all of the issues that uh, everybody says is going on. And I can't get into a campground. There's no place for me to stay. It's it's impossible. It, there's places. You just have to be flexible. Um, it's kind of nice because I've been talking about it for over the last month or more. And I see that finally one of the other RV channels is speaking up and basically parroting exactly what I've said and that is if you're flexible there's sites there are sites out there so uh, good for them I'm glad that they've stepped up and not joined up with what I had said initially the hype don't believe the hype morning YouTube coming from parachute Colorado for probably the last time today <laughs> uh, actually maybe when we start driving and it is moving day so we're going to head to um, Utah, Utah, uh, Duchesne, Utah, right on some kind of a river lake thing. I don't even know what it is. I think it's a lake. <laughs> we just picked a spot. And so far we have reservations all the way to the Oregon coast and we just made them all kind of last night. We're thinking then at that point we're going to continue in a southward direction from Washington to Oregon. I think we're going to just continue south from that point. I don't know how that's going to work out, but we definitely don't want to go across the top of the country um, and over the mountains one more time. <sighs> Did you think the stay here was pretty good? Yeah. It was quiet. Yeah. But um, we talked to the neighbors the first night we were here, I think it was, and seemed pretty cordial and the people next door here they had a uh, little get together get together for fourth of july we heard a few fireworks going off i don't know if they were in this park i doubt it but it doesn't make a difference they're illegal everywhere because of fire ban and stuff so um the cops were out yeah matter of fact that's something we seen more cops on july 4th on a sunday than we had the entire time we were here and then and, some and fire and the fire department too yeah. they were running around i think they were looking for people that were ha potentially having a fire or having fireworks or something because there are some bands in place all right we got to get ready we got to get out of here and get to the next place we're on 64 heading uh west obviously west 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 and we're in between this wrangley and uh see Wrangley and Dinosaur that's the name of the next town we're going to and this is an ugly piece of landscape I mean it's nice to look at for a little bit but then you realize it just looks like apocalypse and um, Chevron owns looks like all of this yeah on both sides on both sides maybe I'll put the window down so maybe you can see it a little bit better all this acres and acres and acres and what I want to point out more than anything this road 
is a five wash minutes of delay. Water. We're added to your route. Who cares? Five minutes of delay was added to my route. I can't even get to where you're going to delay me at. This is just so bumpy. And I am. And I, what I'm saying is, for how long this truck is and how short this trailer is, man, I've got these things folding in half, just bouncing up and down, and it, it's just okay. So. One thing I noticed about Colorado is they don't fix their roads. Instead, they'll put up a sign. And the way we noticed that was on our uh, way here to where we're at currently, we had to travel through Rifle or towards Rifle. So from Parachute, Colorado to Rifle, Colorado. And they had a sign up that said, Road Heave, Slow Down, or put something like a cautious sign, but they said road heave area ahead. Now, if you guys don't know what a road heave is, in Ohio, we have road heave happen occasionally. It will cause the road to buckle really hard. Well, I'm going to tell you that their road heave, is, it just looks like it's poor asphalt. It's just a poor asphalt job because I didn't see any heave you know, in one little area, they just had big areas like this. That it just looks like they didn't get it graded flat before they put all asphalt on it. This is actually dangerous in spots because your vehicle is almost coming off the ground. So I, again, I, I've never made roads, but I don't know if you can tell up in the distance on the camera, you see places where the white line disappears on the side of the road because there's so many rises and undulations in the road. It's just, oy. oh, there goes those slow trucks again. We passed these guys way back, way, 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 way back. We passed that white truck, that tanker, and that tanker probably an hour ago. And now we're behind them again wonder if they're going to actually do the speed limit. So where are we at? Uh, through Dinosaur. We went through that Dinosaur. Um, nothing exciting there. I, I Anybody that knows the area or lives in the area that's watching the video, sorry, but it's, it's Monday. I know it's the July 5th, but still it's Monday and half the shops weren't open. It's 1130. The ice cream stand that was there looked kind of dirty. It looked didn't look like they had cleaned up around there or something. I, it just looked cluttered. Uh, there was a couple of cool looking shops there, but we weren't really interested in that. So Heidi, let me get out here. Heidi is uh, making us some lunch. This, these guys are coming up a big hill here. So you can see her coming out with the lunchola. Um, look at these holes here. There's some kind of gopher hole or some kind of ground dwelling animal and it goes all the way up. Ooh, so Heidi's got us uh, tuna fish and egg salad and she got some Dunkin' coffee and it's getting ready to rain, uh, which I could use. Oh, wait till I tell Heidi this. Guess who passed us? No, those trucks. Oh my word. Oh. You believe it? And that white truck that we passed, the pickup truck, uh -huh. they're with him. Because he pulled over to wait for him. So the rain's Back starting to come. It, you got the water pump turned off? Yep. Everything's buttoned up, everything yep. back in the sink, soap dispenser off? Yep. All right, time to go. Get, 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 and go. Well, we're coming up on the campground. You can see all the Head to red 40. water. On the left. And our campground. Almost passed it. I think we just passed it. Oh, no, maybe not. it's down here. I think. I think it's another entrance. Well, anyways, this is the uh, campground on the water. And they have plenty of spaces. We didn't have any problems. We'll figure that out. It's 600 feet. So you let's go ahead and we're going to get ourselves in here and see what it's about and show you what it looks right, like. So we've arrived at another campsite. And I'm just going to, again, I hate doing this to you guys, but look off, look over here. This is Monday, July 5th. Uh, how many sites you see here? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 
13, 14, 15. There's 16, 17, 18. 18 open sites. No reservation. We called them and said, we need a spot. And they said, come on in. It's 30 amp. And it's an RPI park. So we only pay $10 to stay here. So uh, the place is called Lakeside RV Campground. And it's in Duchesne, Utah. I want to show you the, the hookups. Um, it is a 30 amp site. No big deal. You know, I've talked about that in the past. The water pressure is really good. So as we walk here, um, the internet, T-Mobile, uh, not too good here. T-Mobile is about two megabytes per second down and the upload speed is really non-existent. It's like 0.1. Um, as far as the Verizon, it's two to three megabytes per second down. The upload, not very good. It's like 0.4. Um, the AT&T, and again, these are just with the routers, just sitting inside the RV uh, in the windows. They're not, I don't have my antenna up or anything like that. The, the uh, AT&T, that one is about 17 megabytes per second uh, on the download, and the upload is like in the five range, four to five range. So I've seen it as high as eight, but I'll say four to five. So we definitely have um, decent internet here. They also have Wi-Fi available, but he said it's down right now. Apparently there's shower houses here. Um, and, bathrooms. and of course bathrooms. Um, it's it's a it's a nice park. Uh, you are close to the highway. We gotta go to this dog walk. Is that what we do here? Or we go down the ramp? The ramp. Okay. Takes you to the water. Oh nice. So as Heidi had just said, we're pretty much right on the water here. So we're gonna go down and take a look at that, show you what that looks like. But yeah, this is nice views, nice park. Very clean. Yeah, it's clean. Um, it's a pretty pleasant day. I don't know what the temperature is. Um, I might be able to tell I you. think we're probably in the 80s. It feels like the 80s. Kind of cloudy. 92. Oh, 92. Wow. It's it's pleasant. No internet though. down here. <laughs> that was the last update. <laughs> so the uh, clouds have tried to kind of drop some water down on us a, a few times but not a big deal not nothing severe oh that is cool it's some well that's the only way you can get in the water unless you just wait a minute this those shoes are waterproof just no, walk I in no. it's pretty I mean there's a little bit of stuff right here it's like but it's boat. pretty clear I mean yeah. you can see in the water like it drops off pretty good too. Yes, yeah, it's nice. Let's go. You want to go um, get the boat out of the truck then? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not getting the boat. I want to see what it looks like around this corner, so we'll go check that out here in just a second. But nice like place. A lot of fun out there. I think I could have stayed a couple more days here. That'd been. That's okay. We could fish. Let's see if we can go over here. I'm going to shortcut the path. Oh, I don't have the same arm I used to. Oh, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I don't even have an arm. I'd have to. That hurt. Yeah. That hurt my arm. She got a broken arm. It's kind of cool. This is all kind of cool. The kids would have loved this when they were younger. Yeah. Um, our kids used to, we went up on the Erie, loved to play on all the rocks alongside of Erie. around the corner here and see what this is all about. Thank you. 
there's a platform for you. That rock, just go run, jump, dive in. I wouldn't get out for it. <laughs> yeah, neither would I. All right, that's our fun for the day. <laughs> the yeah, the, the excitement day. for the day. We've been driving quite a long time, so well, not, not terribly long. Four hours. Four hours, yeah. That was, but we got our next few stops spaced out pretty good. I think uh, we have a three hour drive tomorrow maybe. And then everything else is shorter than that, usually about two hour drives. Yeah. Well, as you can probably tell, we are slowly putting everything away for yet another move. But as far as the park goes, this was a pretty good one. It is very quiet here. Last night we heard some kind of a screeching racket. Had no clue what it was. And come to find out that they've got one lane shut down in that bridge. And they're doing construction. And there was a line of cars at about 11 o'clock that went as far as the eye could see. But it's very dark in this park, so... It was kind of strange that, uh, you know, it looked like Christmas lights or something strung out. But it figures we have to go over that bridge. Now, I'll have to say that they must be moving pretty quick because see where those cranes are down there? Well, I don't think you can see it. But there's a couple of cranes directly in front of where I'm showing you in the center of the screen here. Um... They have, you know, yellow booms on them. They were here last night when they started their work, so they're almost done. I had to get all this stuff inside the truck. Heidi's already flushed the tank. And, uh, yeah, we just threw this. We didn't even need our filters last night for what we were doing here today. Now, we did put uh, about another five minutes worth of water in the, uh, in the RV tank because we're going to be staying at Walmart for the night. And we didn't, uh, we really don't know how much fresh water we have in there. We have reservations though, um, coming up that we made last night at a couple of parks that look pretty interesting. They're Thousand Trails Park, so we'll show you guys that when we get to it. But we have some attractions that we want to check out on the way, so a little chilly today. All right, so we're leaving the park. There's two entrances. Just to let you know, there's two entrances to the park. There's one that's prior to the park uh, in either direction. So if you're coming down close to the bridge, that's the easiest intersection to real or the entrance to use. But just to let you know that there is uh, another way. If you pass either uh, entrance, there's still another one to go to. They got some bridge work here. And, uh, yep, yeah. and we'll be on our way. Yeah, Heidi don't like this. Continue on US 40. yesterday that there was uh, construction here. I told Heidi maybe we should start filming a little bit of the ride. <laughs> We're kind of numb to it. <laughs> We're going down a pretty good hill here. We're at 7,000, we're just at 7,900, we're at 7,300, and I mean in just a short time, my ears have popped again. But the uh, drive has been pleasant this morning, this road's kind of bumpy, but other than that, 
I'm gonna take a nap. <laughs> He's kidding. Yeah, I'm kidding. Wake me up when we get there. So we're uh, headed to Salt Lake City just to drive through Salt Lake City for the most part. Uh, we're gonna stop at Blue Beacon because, oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> Which bugs? Everything. Oh, it's just horrible. And I've already washed the truck. Oh, look, some rocks made it out on the road. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Little rocks, but nonetheless, there's some rocks out there. There's some rock Same there too. Line. So uh, yeah, we we washed the truck a couple times at a poor car wash. Six minutes of delay. We're added to your route. Thank you. It was ten, then it was five. Now it's six. There's an accident somewhere along our route. Again, this GPS is connected to my phone. Links are in our store. It, it, it does a great job. It tells you a lot of information. For us, right now, of course, we always look at the uh, uh, elevation so we can kind of see what's going on, you know, what's what's up, what's down, and when I need to be accelerating, when I need to be uh, checking up. And right now, we're, we're going down. Um, then we got to go up, and then a big down. Then a little up, and then a big down, and we should be done. <laughs> so we're driving out past some of these places, and if any of you are from Utah or uh, Colorado or Arizona, I'm kind of curious. Some of these places we passed, I mean, they're out in the middle of nowhere. And we see people that have their houses that are just in nowhere. I mean, really, there's nothing for miles to get to town, to get gas, to get groceries, to go to the doctor's. I mean, they're not close to anything. What? What's your deal there? What? Are you retired? I'm just curious. Uh, what? What do you? If you guys know of anybody, are they retired? Did they work for someplace local and they made that drive every day to work? Um, are, are they? You know, was it the, they, they inherited the house from the family? Um, I, I just, again, we're trying to figure it out because I I can't find the appeal. That's, I guess, what I want to know. I want to know what the appeal is because you can buy property so cheap. For example, out in Wyoming, you could buy, you know, uh, 20 acres for $5,000 um, for another uh, $5,000 for a total of $10,000. You could get 20 acres and and have like a little creek possibly running through your property on some hill. Um, it's very scenic, it, it, it's appealing, but I'm just curious, what what do you do? What would you do? How would you, how do you exist? Because actually we thought that we could do that, but after being yeah. in Colorado, yeah. or um, in Villa Grove, that everything is so far away, 30 to 50 miles to town. Yeah. Yeah, it was... With very little in between. It was tough. So we just had passed, before we got to this, you know, through the mountains here. We have not passed a grocery store since we... Yeah. We've driven stopped. a long... There's a convenience store and a gas station. Yeah. But we have not passed any grocery whatsoever. And it's not like that, you know, we're passing a bunch of big cities or there's offshoots, you know, roads that take you into cities. We're, we're not passing any of that. Um, well, at least that it's like, all, right. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm on the map, right. There is like no trails. Road. Yeah. If you look, there's not any extra roads. Yeah. And it's a um, lot of res uh, uh, recreation, obviously. Yes. Lots of places to camp. And I understand that that's appealing. But again, to to not have a store to go to, your favorite restaurant, a cafe, um, your, a post office, a UPS store, Amazon locker, um, a doctor's appointments, a, a mechanic's garage, a parts store. I just don't know how, how you necessarily exist um, to do what what uh, what uh, what we do? Yeah, I, I'm not gonna say we're normal. Right. <laughs> it's just what we do. So I thought we would talk about that as we drove through this area, so you could 
enjoy the sights here. And apologies, um, by the time you see this video, uh, you guys are already going to be chomping at the bit of, hey, what's going on? Uh, hopefully we've posted something on YouTube or Facebook, Instagram, or all three of them. We definitely are up, you know, updating our patrons uh, on Patreon if you guys want to jump on that bandwagon. Um, because Patreon uh, gets the information first about what's happening, up-to-date information. And then uh, Facebook and Instagram, that's just, it's a little bit convenient, you know, for us to do that. To be able to give you some sort of update where we're at, that kind of a thing. Sometimes. Sometimes. They said Pat Patreon's the only place that you keep up to date with us. And uh, then YouTube's kind of the last. Um, and we are moving fast enough and through enough states and covering enough miles that unless I get some really fast internet, I won't be able to post a, a video of it. So. When you're watching this now, I'm sure quite a bit of time has already passed. Uh, so apologies, it's just the nature of the beast. I I guess I could probably sneak it in somehow, but I'm not exactly sure how. Maybe maybe that's something I need to work on. Maybe I need to uh, you know keep my laptop in the truck, and when we stop, you know, and have lunch or something, see if I can connect up to something kind of fast uh, and see if we can get some editing done. Might be able to. Salt Lake City has a problem with the homeless also because these people are living permanently in these RVs out here, which I, I've i never seen. I know they do that in California, but I've never seen that here. Wow. Yeah, they're just un actually unhooked alongside the road. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're flat out, full on living on the, in on one the street. In mile, turn left on South Redwood Road. On, along a golf course even. Go figure that out. Look at that. Wow. Holy cow. That can't be right. But, you know, people got to do what they got to do. And they, figure, a railroad they get an RV that's leaking. It is better than living in a tent on the corner. Wow. It's something I've, I've never seen that before. Light. You know, we, we've seen it on TV, but I've never seen it before. Personally. Right Alright, we gotta get back on. We tried to do Blue Beacon. What a mistake. So Blue Beacon Salt Lake City, you better hit it at the right time. Don't be like a, a be just before noon on a, a Tuesday or whatever because you're gonna run into way too many trucks, way too little driveway. I wouldn't actually make it your destination unless you were in the area because they're uh, the location of it is like right in the middle of the city and there's not a lot of parking or uh, a lot of drive before you get in to get washed so we'll pick it up a little later so we stopped off at uh, Walmart in what's this town again Harrisville yeah Harrisville Utah when we first got here Okay, we were going to stay the night here. There's a garden center that is kind of a tight loop, but you can get in there. And that's where they like you to park. Now, you got to go in and ask, obviously. But um, once we got here, we realized it was so early. It was like 11. We, have to, we had to do shopping, which we did. 
at Walmart. So we just called a park that's up the street about another, I don't know. 150 miles. Yeah, about another 150 miles. It's not very far. And of course, made a reservation. We called a, a, another park, but they said that if we were to stay, we'd have to unhook. Well, we didn't want to unhook. As far as traveling and staying, yeah, I know it's just one night, but we're not having a problem. We're not having a problem. Like I said, the only time we're having a problem is if we're trying to do a week to two weeks to three weeks at some of the Thousand Trails. But even then, I think there's a way around that if we were to use Thousand Trails and RPI. And But we're going to go ahead and head out of here. It's a little tricky getting in to Walmart. It's kind of hidden. Hmm. But once you're in Walmart, it's uh, it's pretty decent. So we got mountains there. And these are the mountains we came over. And uh, we're not going to the mountains. <laughs> we're, go we're going in that direction. I mean, there's still some mountains, but we're supposed to stay relatively low. Let's see, matter of fact. Uh, yeah, so we're at 4,300 feet. Looks like we're going to stay at 4,300 feet for a while. All right, so we pulled off the expressway, which now you can't see very well, but we uh, it's pretty amazing because... <laughs> We just come to the gas station, Heidi said, oh, I need to get some cigarettes. And I go, well, there's a gas station right over there. And we made a right. And as soon as we pulled in, it says, welcome to Village of Trees. And this is the check-in. This is the office. They got a grill here, everything. So we're gonna go out that way and uh, get our spot. Uh, this is where we're gonna stay for the night. I'm not cooking tonight. We're gonna go up there and have fish and chips. I don't know what it tastes like, but it don't smell bad in there. And they're open till nine, so after we get set up, we can go have some dinner. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. Yeah. We get the shaded spot, he said, because we're here first. <laughs> first out of two. There was somebody else coming in, I don't know. It's a nice little park. Maybe it's not little, but it's a nice park. Okay. okay, we'll pick it up a little later. Okay guys, I'm going to cheat here instead of putting this as a screenshot. Um, this is the RV park that we're at now currently, and in our immediate impressions, was so good about it that we uh, just requested to stay another night and they said sure so again make a reservation but there's sites available and we were going to go to Twin Falls you can see Twin Falls over here which we're going to do that tomorrow I'm sorry the next day but we were going to spend two days in this area anyways and Look at the uh, park that we're at as far as what it looks like on the map. It's called Village of Trees RV Resort. This may not be everybody's cup of tea, but I'm telling you, I like it. There's a, a ramp that goes down. This is the Snake River. So the RV resort, you can see, you go right down and all, you got all this riverfront that you can screw around on, which looks like there's trees, so I don't know how much you can get through there. And you can kind of see what the RV park looks like here. Um, it is shaded where we're at, which we'll walk around the RV and we'll show you what the, the site looks like. We got really nice grass. It's soft outside, um, which is something after seeing all that desert. But this is a, a park that gives you a good SAM discount or AAA discount. And it's like $31 to stay for the night. The electricity is good. We have 50 amp here, plugged in, turned on both air conditioners turned on the refrigerator compressor, turned on the hot water tank element, and it worked fine. All of them kicked up. Uh, I was pulling 41 amps for some time and everything was good. So, um, the other thing we did, uh, which I showed you there, Heidi checked in, it's basically at the gas station. And when you walk in the place, it reminds me, at least the smell for me, I told Heidi, I said, oh my God, it smells like midway drive-in because you know they're cooking in there. They have a, a convenience store that is, you know, as as far as convenience stores go, 
it's not a real great convenience store. As far as camp stores go, it's incredible. It's they they got a lot of stuff in there. Okay, now here's here's where it gets even better. They have a swimming pool here, open nine to nine, no lifeguard. Laundry. Uh, they have laundry and they have uh, bathrooms. the bathrooms, the shower houses, and they're open 24 hours a day. So for night owls, you can go do your laundry in the middle of the night. The uh, parking, they escort you to your site. The site, at least what I have here, it's a pull-through. There's a lot of pull-through sites. Um, I don't know how many sites there are total. Let me go ahead and like turn you around all, here. They're all pull-through. Yeah, it looks like all of them are pull-through. Absolutely. And the nice thing is I have actually a choice here, and I don't know if it's that way on all of them, but I have a choice of where my sewer was to hook up. Uh, it has very nice picnic tables. They are fiberglass picnic tables with metal frames. Two days in a row we got picnic tables yeah. that are yeah. worthy. <laughs> right. Um, across the street from us, which again, Heidi will walk you around and kind of just give you a lay of the lane, land there. It's like a park. It's just a big open field. Um, not, not huge, but pretty big for the kids to go play. Um, they have rules here as far as ATVs riding through the park, stuff like that. Um, it's kind of a first come, first serve which site you get because when we got here, he says, oh, you get a good shaded site, which a few of them are a little sunnier than others, but this is a very nice shaded site. They have lots of trees here. They do have lots of trees. I mean, it's village of trees, yeah. you, would, you would hope so. Yeah. Um, the other thing that uh, we like, <laughs> we shouldn't, <laughs> but we like, is they have a restaurant here. Um, they have basically a, uh, a takeout place here. But there are tables. There were tables inside yeah. there too. Burgers and uh, pizza. Uh, burritos. Yeah. Uh, tacos. Breakfast, breakfast. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, and uh, all kinds of different sandwiches. Um, it's a it's a pretty good menu that they offer. And here's the b bad part: they deliver to your site. You can order, and they will deliver it to your site. They have ice cream. Too. They have ice cream. Oh my! And they obviously cater to the people people off the highway, yes. the people that are in the neighborhood, which I have no idea how many people were here. Yeah. But it it's was busy up there. Yeah, it's, it was it's pretty busy. busy up there and the and the park is busy and it's getting packed. Yeah, but we asked, hey, can we stay one more night? Because here's the other good thing. Uh, AT and T, Verizon, T Mobile, all of them are fine. And they have free Wi Fi. They said the free Wi Fi, sometimes it gets congested. And uh, it may be a little bit too slow for you, but for us, we have all the internet that we need. Without the pool. So we're thinking, I'm going to maybe try to squeeze out a video here. I don't know if I can. Um, we'll see how today goes. I just want to relax. I'll tell you this. If we were here three days, I would say for sure you'd be getting a video. But uh, He might yeah. have to work on that while I do laundry. Yeah. The road was, it was a pretty, the ride wasn't as comfortable or, or nice or anything. Oh, there's a squirrel out there. Oh, look, a squirrel. <laughs> but the ride wasn't as enjoyable. Um, Up and down. I'm tired of the hills. Uh, my my knee actually hurt and my, from pushing the gas to the floor for so long. Yeah. You know, and I just shifted it manually to go through all the hills and everything. Um, I, I really don't want to set the cruise control on that because I, I mean, the speed limit's 80. I didn't. I didn't do 80, did I? <laughs> I did 80 most of the way because I just wanted to get here. Um, yeah, he had the lead foot today, but I'll tell you that that is probably the first time in about seven weeks. Oh yeah, I haven't. I haven't been driving very fast. I mean, because obviously, whenever we're not hooked up to the trailer, that he isn't we're not really going places that yeah we're not unhooking here so yeah we're, keep, we're staying two nights yeah we're gonna keep the truck hooked up because we're we want to go to the falls up about 44 miles from here but there's no sense of us driving 44 miles there 44 miles back when we can drive 44 miles in the morning I think they open at 9 or 10 we can do our we can see the falls it's supposed to be the falls of Niagara Falls in the west of the west right so we're gonna do that and then we can continue on right so uh, this it's turned out to be a really good stop yeah. to tell you the truth we were gonna stop two days somewhere 
Um, it could have been anywhere. And okay. it just so happened this is probably one of the nice independent owned yeah. parks. Yeah. And it's um, cheap. Yeah. It's I mean cheap considerably. It's like thirty one dollars out the door. Uh, tax and everything with the discount, you know, the Good Sam's or the FMCA. Or, Didn't sorry. quite meet our twenty-five dollars, but right, it was close. Yeah, and it's well worth it. Um, yeah. The only thing is, is we had full intentions of boondocking tonight in Walmart, so just, we're carrying around like fifteen gallons of water in the RV. So I'm towing around 15 gallons of water, maybe even 20 gallons of water in there, <laughs> which we didn't need to. Um, so we're going to enjoy ourselves here. Again, Heidi will show, you know, outside a little I'll, bit. I'll probably take you, uh, I'll probably walk around the park before the dark, and then I may go back up to the laundry so we can close this out. Yeah, so yeah. So you can, well, maybe I can get that up then. We'll see. Hopefully that's the plan. But... We're going to um, not order food. Oh, by the way, we're in Idaho. <laughs> yeah. I forgot to tell you where we were. What's the name of this town? Declo, Declo, Idaho. <laughs> we totally forgot about that one. It's right off of uh, Interstate 84. We're just short of um, Fall City, yep. uh, Idaho. So. Twin Falls. Twin Falls. Sorry, Twin Falls, Idaho. So it's it's on the beaten path, and. I'm going to remember this one if we cut yeah. across. 84 is pretty big, so I, I uh, hope that I don't have to travel it. Yeah, I don't. I hope, again, I hope so, too. I mean, it, you've seen it once. I'll be honest, I'm really tired of uh, the hills. I'm, I'm just tired of going up and down hills all the time. And for somebody that's going to travel this area, I'm going to say what I said, I think, earlier in this video or maybe last video. Um, I would consider, and I said it way long time ago if you're traveling through hills a lot you may want to consider a diesel um, I, I see and I understand why the truck did it fine I mean half of those I think the slowest I went up any hill today was 45 miles an hour and that was just for a brief period of time I was yeah most of the time I was doing 60 65 miles an hour everywhere up all these hills so Hey, and we're still getting nine miles to the gallon. Yeah, but it's but it's dwindling. It is dwindling. <laughs> but it dwindled it, a lot it didn't, today. It didn't fall the way that I thought it would. Yeah, I know. So we must be doing pretty good. I'm about due for an oil change also. Man, plus it'll probably get down to seven again. Yeah, we'll get it down to seven eventually. <laughs> and still, now we're in Idaho, and I'm still ticked off. The gas isn't bad here. It's three sixty nine for premium. But my word, man, come on, 91 octane. I don't understand that. If I'm paying premium prices, I should get premium gas. Yeah. I should get 93, at least 92. I'm just going to give you a once around of the park. They do have a little playground for the kids, which is awesome. You can walk your dog anywhere in the park as long as it's on a leash. The pool is over there. Maybe I'll take a little walk like they have a little pavilion here also this is a really super nice park and the weather is beautiful I'll give you kind of a once around here there's, I think, five rows of RVs, so it's really nice. So I'm going to try to get through here. They're watering the grass, and it uh, doesn't look like anybody's at the pool, so I can show you the pool. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Picnic tables, a little pavilion. And the pool. Oh, restrooms and laundry. Maybe we we'll see if we can get in here. <laughs> I don't remember them giving me a code. That stinks. Well, the pool's not super big, but 
it's big enough. So, pretty small for all the sites they have, but hey, that's all that counts. It's, there's a swimming pool. So I'll have to get the code to the laundry. Wow. So here's the laundry. Very nice. Yeah. Nice, clean. Looks like it cost a buck to wash or a buck to try. I'm not sure. Don't say how much to a buck to wash. That is super nice. Very clean. Super impressed. Super impressed. Oh, oh my god, this way. Sorry. <laughs> Alrighty. We'll go back. As Heidi said, we're getting ready to close this video out. I'm going to go ahead and try to upload it here for you. Uh, it's the next day, uh, but we're going to uh, start the next video as far as what the day's like. More maybe on the park potentially, and then on our way to Twin Falls, and then even further. We'll be going into Washington and then on to Oregon. So stay tuned for that video coming up, but as far as this one goes, Sorry it went long, but I wanted to show you everything we got to see. Um, and we even cut out a lot. So, uh, as always, we hope to see you out here. Bye. <music>